that we shall invite on stage Shalaja Singh, Assistant General Manager, Corporate Communications, RBI, Mumbai. RBI in the news for various reasons and uh, we would invite Assistant General Manager Shelja Singh Ji uh, uh, on stage communicating with Gen X in the perspective of banking. Shelja Singh is a central banker. She has been working with the Reserve Bank of India for 12 years now and at present is AGM in RBI's Department of Communication at its Mumbai headquarters. Earlier, while working with the bank, she had also been a columnist with Mint for three years, penning a weekly column called Real Simple. So, we uh, look forward to Shailaja Singh's presentation up here on stage, please. Shailaja Ji, where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you're already there. So, Shailaja Singh uh, used to pen a weekly column called Real Simple. Which one? We are truly looking for a simple presentation from you. We are behind schedule. I am. I don't want to sound cruel, but you have ten minutes with you. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we'll now be talking on uh, the topic communicating with the Gen Next in the perspective of banking. Uh, this topic in itself has got three elements. Communication, we all know what it is. Banking, that also we all know. Here we'll be talking of banking and payment systems. That comes along with banking. And the most important component, Gen Next. So who is the Gen Next? You, me, the next generation? Well, I think it's all of us. Uh, the next generation, we can call them as the Gen Y, Millennials, there are many names coined for them. Millennials means those who attained adolescence during the turn of the millennium, that's why the name. And uh, uh, they grew with the growing technology, so did we. So we should not be, uh, we should not think that we're not a part of Gen Next. So the Gen Next is they, we, and even people who are elder to us. So uh, how do we communicate when it comes to banking? Let's start with how do we communicate presently, then we'll go to the future generation. Uh, for we, I didn't have a better example, so I'll start with I. Um, I'll tell you of a typical example. My Sunday is shopping. Uh, sorry, my Sunday is banking transactions or uh, transactions that I did. Uh, I had an appointment with a dentist. Uh, I booked an Ola cab through the Ola app, went to the dentist, took an appointment there, made the payment by swiping my uh, debit card, uh, saw the dentist, came back again using a cab, uh, this time through an Uber app. On the way, I had to buy certain things. I stopped at the stationery shop, uh, register for my uh, notebook for my daughter, costing me 50 rupees. A natural tendency, I opened my wallet, and the hero of the wallet was popping out. Uh, of course, cards are now the heroes with the cashless economy, but uh, this time the hero was somebody else. It was a 100 rupee note. The sole 100 rupee note that I had, I didn't want to let it go. So I asked the lady, uh, do you have a prepaid wallet? Probably she didn't know the technical word. She said, uh, you can pay by Paytm. So I did that. Inspired, I went to the other shop. I had to buy something else, a Christmas cap actually for the school. Um, that cost uh, uh, another 40 rupees. I was very happy with my previous experience. I asked him to share the... Um, the pre uh, I asked him to share uh, the Paytm uh, number. He said, uh, sorry, I don't have. Why? Madam, I'm having this swiping machine. So when I have the swiping machine, why do I need a wallet? I said, okay, fine. I didn't want to go into the RBI style preaching about the difference and about the commission that he has to pay for a swipe machine. Uh, presently, he does not have to pay that when he's using the uh, Paytm and other kinds of apps. Anyways, I did the transaction, went home bought groceries using another app for the groceries. Uh, it was late, I ordered food using the app for ordering food. And I was very happy that I did enough work without using cash and I am now in the technical era. Am I? I think I am and I think I'm very smart for this technological revolution. But my 15 year old nephew thinks I'm not. He says your mobile phone is so, so cluttered, so many apps. I said, yes, because I need all these apps. I cannot survive without them. He said, do you? Uh, well, do we? 
we'll just see a bit later uh, before that i'll just touch upon how the new generation or the next generation communicates we'll not go to the statistics forget the left side we have already discussed a lot of them in the first half and going to the right side you see uh, different studies have showed that around 50% of the mobile internet users in india belong to the age group of 18 to 24 years so the millennials as we call them and uh, there is an urban rural divide i agree in urban uh, sector definitely it's much more than in rural sector and probably by the end of the presentation also we'll not have an answer as to how to tackle best the rural sector and best and most appropriately well uh, there are different activities that the generation next or even we perform on the mobile phones and smartphones uh, the statistics are old but i wanted to show the bifurcation we do smsing uh, social networking and all these things mobile banking use apps for the transactions uh, see videos browse them some are paid some are not paid games and uh, the barcodes have uh, changed a bit over the years and now the social networking takes the maximum share so this gen y the millennials who have been raised in an era where uh, technology is the world and their own world is that small couch and in the corner of the house where they are huddled with their mobile phones doing what not but not talking to people at home he communicates with the whole world but not with the people at home uh, why because there's an advent of technology and he feels these people are very demanding i'll say um, they are we can say we are the v generation but for them probably we should say they are the me generation so they are very demanding aaj chahiye abhi chahiye they want it in a jiffy they want it instantly and everything has to be as per their convenience probably personalized also and customized also and that is how so many corporates so many banks and so many others are reaching out to them through online offline and other modes so uh, can we say that these kids will be the torch bearers of a revolution of a digital revolution for india we think so and we hope so okay so uh, this was a bit about india we'll come back to india a bit later and just move a bit ahead to our neighbor china i'm going to china for a particular reason i was talking about the apps problem so many apps that i had and i was sitting at the doctor's place and thinking had i got an app to book an appointment online sitting at home making a pre payment so that i save a time when i go there i didn't have an answer but there are certain answers in certain places for an all in one app and china has got something called wechat it's uh, we can say it's like the swiss military life which does so many things and i'll uh, not want to speak about the many things rather uh, there's a small video that i'll uh, i would like to play can we uh, play the video please if you are sitting in the united states or europe right now you've probably never used a chinese app but the reality is if you want to know how the internet will develop China, the land once known for its cheap rip-offs, has actually become a guide to the future. You know, the internet is the internet, but for China, the internet is more like an intranet. It's largely walled off from the Western world by this incredibly complex system of filters and blocks that we call the Great Firewall. And basically, the Great Firewall blocks any foreign site the Communist Party doesn't think it can control. So that means there is no Facebook, no Twitter, no Google. Instead, what filled the internet vacuum was a generation of Chinese copycats that have grown into huge companies. So for Google, you had Baidu. For YouTube, you had Youku. For Twitter, you had Sina Weibo. And the list goes on and on. It's almost as if the Chinese internet is a lagoon as an aside to the greater ocean of the internet. And in that lagoon there are these swamp monster apps that bear some resemblance to the creatures in the ocean, but are mutated in some ways because they evolved in a different kind of environment. But things have started to shift in the sense that before no one outside of the lagoon really cared about the swamp monsters. But now all of a sudden, some of the features they've developed are so amazing that Western apps are trying to copy them. And the greatest example of this is WeChat. WeChat is an example of, uh, for lack of a better word, a super app. It's a Swiss army knife that basically does everything for you. 
It's your WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, and Uber. It's your Amazon, Instagram, Venmo, and Tinder. But it's other things we don't even have apps for. There are hospitals that have built out whole appointment booking systems. There are investment services. There are even heat maps that show how crowded a place is, be it your favorite shopping mall or a popular tourist site. The list of services goes on basically forever. But it's not the variety of things you can do on WeChat that makes it so powerful. It's the fact that they're all in one app. So why does that matter? Hypothetically, imagine you're sitting at home and one day you notice your corgi is dirty. You open WeChat, hit a few buttons, and a few hours later a man shows up at your door with some shampoo and a big vacuum. Your dog gets cleaned and he looks great. You take a photo, you share it with your friends, and tag the dog cleaning business. You haven't left the app. Your friend who likes Hello Kitty and works a boring office job is slacking off at work and looking at WeChat. She sees the photo of your clean corgi. She decides she wants her poodle clean. She clicks the tag on your photo and orders the same service. Within seconds, the man with the big vacuum is on his way to her house. She pays him, and he's happy because he got paid instantly on WeChat. She starts chatting with you to thank you. Neither of you have left the app. While chatting, she tells you about a new hip noodle joint. She says, you have to come. It's a schlep, but you accept. She orders food while still at her desk. You order a taxi. She pays for the food. On the way to her house, the man with the big vacuum invests the money he earned from both of you into a wealth management product that's probably a little too risky. Neither of you, nor the man with the big vacuum, have left the app. Both of you arrive, and the app tells the kitchen you're there. Your WeChat profile photo pops up on the wall. It's an old photo from the year you had that weird part in your hair. Of course she makes a comment. Your food is served. You notice your meat is a bit overcooked, so you snap a photo and post a disparaging restaurant review. You're already on your phone, and you remember you still owe your friend money because she paid. You transfer her money. Neither of you, the man with the big vacuum, nor the restaurant, have left the app. At the restaurant, there are no menus, there are no waiters, there is no cashier. There is only WeChat. By rolling so many functions into one single app, it's altered the concept of virality. It's no longer just videos or images or tweets that can go viral. It's a dog washer, noodles, all sorts of companies and products that get the push of the social network. Here in China, that network is 700 million people. Sounds great, right? Well, it is, but using a single app to find a date, schedule an oil change, or notarize a document also enables WeChat to collect a staggering volume of personal data. They know what you talk about. Um, the basic crux is that uh, there is an app which is an all-in-one app. Although China's internet is typically not internet, it's intranet. Still, you don't feel that you're missing out on Google, you're missing out on Facebook or anything because everything is done by one single app. The advantage is that corporates, advertisers, and even government get so much data about people. So they know how to project a particular product, a particular service to a particular class because they know their... Uh, eating habits, drinking habits, reading habits, moving habits, and so on and so forth. And it is uh, not only good for us, because it is convenience, which we all want at the end of the day. It's good for the organization, it's good for uh, the companies, it's good for the government. So, and uh, they started with just a chatting app way back in 2011 went on to um, this uh, payment transactions using uh, something called uh, red packets. It is basically an electronic version of making New Year payments to friends and relatives. And there, what WeChat does is, if I make a payment to 10 relatives, it decides on its own uh, whom, how much has to be paid, depending on their earning and income profile. So who needs more gets paid more, because these are gifts. Of course, uh, in India, we cannot expect a super app like this and probably this is not the right time for it. So there are many things that exist and that will continue to coexist. And the banks are no less here. They have moved on and developed uh, many uh, apps. There is UPI. Uh, there are different uh, prepaid wallets of banks and of companies. And it is our choice as to which product we want to use. And of course, there are benefits, the pros and cons of all this, which we have to see and work with them. And in the perspective of India, I'll just mention one small example of one private sector bank and how it progressed on the social networking platform targeting the youth. Uh, what they did is, and that all that happened in a span of just one year, from not being on Facebook so to being proliferately on Facebook. 
And they started with this Facebook page uh, just for getting a feedback from their customers and prospective customers uh, and a feedback on the simple posts that they were making on banking, on certain financial advisory services, tips that they were giving. They had a fan page, a dedicated team to answer to every query on the fan page. And then they moved ahead with uh, things that would be of interest to a person. So basically, they knew that banking and finance generally are boring for the new generation. But money is not so everything was linked to money how all you can save your money how all you can save your taxes what are the uh, schemes for uh, making investments what are the security features of notes there were games on this and so forth so basically they targeted the young generation they engaged the young generation and with this content that they had uh, and the good engagement that they had they could pull so many people and in a matter of one year from being nobody on facebook they became the third largest bank to have a presence in on facebook so india is no less and as I said, there are many things which exist, which will continue to exist. Plus, there is a government's uh, flip to all this, to electronic uh, payments, to cashless economy. There is the Aadhaar-enabled uh, uh, payment system that the government is also promoting. There is something in our culture that prohibits us from taking new risks or from doing something that the neighbor is not doing, the friend is not uh, uh, doing. So maybe that, uh, that culture change is gradually coming with the new generation and with an added impet impetus from advertisers and from companies, probably this will go way ahead and I think the youth will become the uh, digital messengers of the technological revolution as our Prime Minister has wanted them to be and has conveyed them through various fora and in his monkey bath and other speeches. So time will tell. Thank you so much. And I hope I didn't overshoot the time too much. RBI is on a, Austin, on, a, on a drive for, you know, kind of keeping us and our expenses under leash. And true to that, Shailaja has kept her presentation bound to a leash. Thank you very much, Shailaja. We, shall, uh, we are gratified that you have taken time from your schedule to be with us. So I would request uh, Narendra Ranjan Mukherjee who missed coming up on stage in the last session. I think he is going to miss this session as well. Uh, Ongshuman Bandupadhyay, National Council member, would you kindly come up and greet uh, Sailaja. Very good. Sailaja, great presentation. Crisp and nice.